Salvete. This is your host Nino. And there is a pressing question which each one of us has certainly considered in the not far away past, namely, if you were miraculously transferred to the times of the Roman Empire or Republic, what sort of technology would you be showing off? <laughs> what would you bring along with you that would be easily and immediately applicable? Now, certainly one might think of engines of some sort or even more complex devices, but seriously, most of us, if left in a pre-technological society, wouldn't be able to construct an engine with the degrees of precision required and, the, uh, and given the absence of modern tools. But what certainly does work, and which I absolutely admire due to its simplicity, are batteries. Indeed, you need no more than, for instance, a little bit of tinfoil or, you know, some other metal, which was always available, some form of copper, or in my case, just a little bit of spare change, and, yeah, something like cloth or paper or some tissue so that you can stack it together in order to form a, an, an electric cell. You are basically just putting a little bit of, of the tissue between the, between the two metals, drenching the tissue with some, something sour like vinegar or the sour juice of some fruit, like, like a lemon, okay, but there might be no lemons available, but still vinegar will be available and, and other sour fruits. And, and that's it. That thing itself already would be then giving off some little amount of electricity. And as you can assume, I haven't just decided to talk about it, but I actually have made a little battery. And <laughs> now that's perhaps not the best design in town, and it is barely driving this LED. But I also admit that the vinegar has started to dry and the flat has started to smell correspondingly. But still, it is incredibly much fun. And perhaps it is more something for the kids, but, you know, each one of us has a big kid in his heart. So, <laughs> I do assure you, I find that enjoyable and entertaining. And it is not technologically difficult to make. In this case, I have simply reused a battery holder for certain lithium polymer batteries which I mistook for a standard AA battery holder, which it is not, like the, the spaces are bigger. However, the diameter of each of those columns is exactly the right, right size in order to put their one cent coins, uh, you know, intermixed with tissues and uh, uh, tin foil. And when I connect the, the leads to, to the LED, it sort of works, like it's not, it's not the most brilliant creation and, and, and I tell you it is getting dimmer over the time, but it fulfills its demonstration purposes just excellently. So if you ever feel bored or if you experience a time warp and arrive in the Middle Ages or in the antiquity, then you can always construct a battery. It turns out that apparently batteries were not unknown in the past, as we have some potential examples even, uh, even in more ancient civilizations, uh, such as in Mesopotamia. But I am of the impression that they didn't know quite what to do with them. Though, you know, if one were to construct something more powerful, that is more powerful than, than to drive an LED, then you are already in business with telecommunications. And that certainly would be something interesting. But that is perhaps something more for a different experiment. Right now I should be happy that this um, LED is even driving <laughs> driven at all. And with this, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great evening. Hope to see you soon here again. And from me... Goodbye. All right, everybody, post dictum time. Now, I mentioned that I would be doing telecommunications, but that's more easily said than done. So, 
how would you actually do it? I would say I would be going for telegraphy, but you know, telegraphy how? Now, LEDs haven't been invented yet. You, you can't use LEDs to, to light up. Normal light bulbs, you know, these things are spherical, uh, made out of glass, having a filament that glows inside. In fact, that's too complex technology. So, no light bulbs. You could be considering some form of membranes which are producing sound, but again, that might be just too difficult to manufacture. Anything which would be creating sparks would, apart from requiring a lot of electricity, uh, constitute a fire hazard. Now, what you could do is evidently something involving magnetism, so that you're having some solenoid which is driving some arm pointing somewhere, but an even simpler solution would be to rely on the electrolysis of salt water. This is something which has been used in designs of the 19th century, like proposed ones, where basically the electricity would be causing bubbles in, in one out of several vials and, and each vial might be having a letter on it. Like that would be the classical version of this. But you can do this any way you like. You can, for instance, implement some coordinate system or, as I have done it, the simplest form is having them in some sort of binary fashion, where they're having one common pole and one selector pole, where you are deciding on which side you would like to turn on electricity. And that can be channeled by cable down to your self-made battery, though this one is not self-made and I'm right now cheating. But still, it's a matter of principle. And if I were to define the one as, uh, you know, dots and the other one as dashes, I could even be more zinc. Like I, I could be sending SOS, for instance. And, <laughs> you know, if I put here, if I put this here to the anode, then you can see the right one bubbling. And that way, that way you could in fact transmit information already. Like I could, uh, you know, do, do SOS or something. I could be doing like, like um, if you define the one as dot and the other one as dash, you could have here dot, 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 and the other one dash, dash, dash. And then again, you know, dot, dot, dot. So, yeah, that already makes it possible to communicate and transmit information through electricity remotely. And it is entirely within the facilities of even the most primitive civilization. So, <laughs> If you would like to have a little bit of an entertaining experiment at home, that would be something you could go for. In a reality, you would need to perhaps change the current from, from the battery uh, to, to some alternating form in order to overcome resistance over longer conductors. But the principle would remain pretty much the same. And, you know, you could create a fancier interface rather than just tap, touching a pole with wires. But, <laughs> but, that, but that's all you need. That's what you need in order to, to do telegraphy, no matter how bad the situation otherwise is. So, <laughs> it's hard to call this useful, but let's call it possible. And with this really... Today's episode ends. Bye.